Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us once again. And today we have uh, the STA Bokoni Asia Center IEMB team with us to discuss the Executive Masters program. And uh, as always, please keep on sharing your questions in the chat, and we will be happy to take them up with the team. And uh, so, professionals who have gained substantial work experience, they often find themselves at crossroads. Whether they must, you know, there there is a time in your career where you must evaluate your options for career growth. on one hand your experience actually provides you with a lot of valuable knowledge and skills and a very solid foundation but at the other hand there is a desire to explore new avenues take on higher responsibilities and venture into new industries or functions and that is what we are exactly going to address today we have alessandro uh, managing director sd bokoni asia center we have ruchi karur uh, marketing head asia bokoni asia center uh, sorry sd bokoni asia center and avisha bhatia she is joining us from the marketing team uh, with uh, sta book on asia center and that this is uh, what we are going to discuss today the agenda is to help you make those decisions and see how you can balance your experience with the pursuit of your career advancement it is a complex task but let us try and make it simpler for you and thank you alessandro thank you for taking out the time to join uh, us today and ruchi and avisha it's nice to have you here and we look forward to the discussion today and the modalities of uh, the event would be that we'll run through a presentation we'll see you know what the program is like we'll understand the program in a better way and then take up questions uh, with respect to career growth career prospects as well as your questions please keep on uh, sharing them in the chat and the team will be happy to address the questions with respect to the program or the admissions process as such so ruchi over to you perfect thank you so much ruchi um so hi everybody uh, as shruti mentioned that we would would love to have the conversation and not make it just a one sided uh, you know presentation uh, we'd love to understand what profiles and backgrounds you come from and if this is the right fitment for you or no uh, we will uh, we will start with alessandro presenting a brief about you know the credentials of the school uh, about asia center and uh, how long we have been here uh with executive education full time programs and a lot of custom uh, executive educations that we do with uh, you know a lot of organizations in india and across the globe uh besides uh, we will run through quickly about the program uh we'd love to have two three lines of you know your work experience and to understand where you come from so that we can probably uh you know uh, speak that language and let you know that if this is the thing that you would be looking at um at this moment so alandro over to you i think you can start with uh, the introduction of the school and uh, in between i will just take up a couple of uh, slides thank you rushi uh, thank you shruti good evening everybody uh, so very quickly uh, who we are So SD Bocconi Asia Center is the uh, Asia platform for SD Bocconi School of Management whose campus uh, you can see here in the photo. Uh, SD Bocconi School of Management is a 52 years old uh, business school uh, with uh, a lot of top rankings so not only quite old but extremely important uh, and uh, we I, I'll give you just a few rankings to position a little bit the school. uh we are uh, we've just been ranked number 6 in the in the world by financial times for our global mba number 1 for the satisfaction of our mba students we are number 4 in europe we are uh, number 4 in the world for custom programs uh and many other uh, rankings and uh, we have some 14 masters that are all in the top 10 in the world we are part of bocconi university that is a, a quite big uh, business university only business with 15000 students and 600 faculty only in business uh, ranked itself number 6 in the world uh, by financial times uh, some 12 years ago we decided to open our first campus outside uh, italy and we chose india for many reasons the similarities between Italians and Indians as a, as people but also the economic structure of the two countries that uh, is very similar heavily based on SMEs and family businesses uh, uh, a lot of sectors that are extremely complementary so it really made a lot of sense to join hands and uh, bring something uh, 
from our side to India. We started with a full-time two-year master MBA, which is now we have just inaugurated the, two days ago uh, the 12th batch with 150 students. And, uh, and then we have the executive MBA, executive master, uh, of which we're talking about today, which is at its uh, seventh batch, which is sixth batch, uh, sixth six batch uh, that we're recruiting right now, uh, which is, yeah, you want to correct yeah, so, me. Yeah, correct. Seventh. It's going to be the eighth batch that we will eighth. be recruiting. Oh my God, okay. Yes. And I'm getting older with the school. Uh, so yeah, it's the eighth batch. Uh, with great, uh, greater uh, and greater success also in our executive uh, master, uh, where the seniority has grown a lot. We have an average of 16 years of work, work experience with a range between 8 to 25 years of work experience. So a very diverse uh, crowd uh, for uh, work experience, but also for uh, background sectors they come from. Uh, which is something that we like a lot because uh, we believe in diversity and what diversity brings in the batch. You know, an executive program uh, for sure is important. What you learn from the faculty that teaches and our faculty is at the, at the top in the world, but it's also important uh, the, experience, the experience, the interchanges with your peers. So we have created this, uh, this program uh, where you, you can see a few numbers here. Uh, because uh, uh, we wanted really to uh, do a, an amazing program, it's uh, based on the same uh, um, uh, on the same curriculum at the beginning of our uh, executive uh, MBA in Italy, uh, with uh, where we uh, we uh, enhanced uh, a few areas where we thought that uh, we 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 should uh, insist a little bit more in India. Uh, we have complemented it. Uh, it's twelve years now that we are here. Our faculty has been teaching here for 12 years. So while 85% of the faculty still is international faculty that comes from our main campus, they are from some 10 different uh, nationalities, so very diverse also there. Uh, so uh, they're amazing with a, a, a great a global perspective to all the cases and all the subjects that uh, you will be dealing with. But as I was saying, they've been teaching in India already for 12 years. Uh, many of them uh, developed uh, uh, Indian cases. So uh, many of them have taught uh, or uh, trained uh, Indian corporates. So there is a very good understanding also of India. So not only there are a few Indian faculty to give that last mile, but also the global faculty now has a, a very good understanding and grip and translation of the global perspective into Indian realities which makes of this program, I would say, something uh, quite unique. So you, uh, as I was saying, we are number four in the world for uh, uh, custom pro for corporate training, screening for executive training. Uh, uh, this kind of quality we have brought to India and we have given it also an Indian translation. So by staying here, you can get a master from SD Bocconi School of Management Milan uh, of the same quality uh, here at, the, at your doorstep. And I want to say it's a, a really at this, of the same quality because the same faculty that teaches in Milan is the same that teaches also in Mumbai. Uh, we, we have also a concentration, two weeks in con, uh, concentration immersions uh, in Milan which is also a very uh, good feature because you do get uh, somehow a further international exposure and a further international networking. When in Milan, uh, not only there are visits and guest uh, lectures from uh, uh, top uh, CXOs from abroad, but there is an interchange of network also with uh, the top programs, uh, senior most programs uh, in Milan. Um, we do understand that uh, you uh, approach this program because uh, uh, you want uh, uh, everybody has his own uh, uh, target, but mostly you want uh, either to step up in your career or uh, to shift uh, your, your sector uh, 
for this reason, we have complemented it here in India also with uh, a lot of uh, uh, interactions with the corporate world, whether it is guest lectures or mentors, uh, um, and also uh, career support by our partner, Michael Pages. And also, when in India, uh, we've started organizing a lot of alumni uh, meetings. Uh, worldwide, with some 1.2 lakhs alumni. Uh, but in India, every year, now we have 300 more alumni. Uh, so the alumni cohort uh, is getting bigger, more interesting. Uh, we have alumni that uh, have really managed to scale up the corporate ladder, uh, like the CEO of Paytm Money, uh, the CFO of Piaggio, uh, and so on. So uh, the alumni is becoming extremely vibrant, even uh, in India, where we have meetings, uh, in uh, Mumbai, in Delhi, in Bangalore, and probably more in the future. Uh, what else, uh, Ruchi, do I have to say, or is it enough? Sure. I would actually just brief you, uh, you know, you all about the format of the program, right? I mean, we've heard about what Buponi is and uh, what is the program uh, structure or what are the program USPs. Um, although the program is structured in a way that it's a 15 month program uh, with once a month on campus, which means Friday, Saturday and Sunday is on campus. Um, and the second cluster or the second intervention of that month is going to be online. Uh, so this will run for about 15 months. Uh, after June onwards, it will start becoming a little bit lesser for sure in the second year, uh, depending on the modules which are left. And because we will start adding up a lot of coaching and mentoring at that point. Um, uh, you will you can ask once you start your application or once you are in touch with my admissions team they will probably help you understand you know how the structure is and how many hours and you know how many in person days are there overall for the program uh, but yeah Sorry. if i may this is a change that we have introduced this year uh, till uh, last year it was two weekends per month but uh, in order to enhance the diversity of the batch uh, and allow people from all over India, and not only because we receive also people from Dubai. Uh, this way, one in-person weekend has become a long weekend. So it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, plus one online, allows people also from different cities to easily travel once a month and attend the classes. Right. Uh, so that is the format or the structure of the program. So something that we are really committed is that the 70% of our program will be delivered in person. Now, it's very deliberately that we have designed the program like that, that we would want the candidates to make sure that, you know, they are coming back to the campus and living um, that peer-to-peer -peer learning, um, unlike any of these online interactions, etc. It helps us build a variety of programs and events when you are on campus. Uh, and hence, you know, 70% of the program is in person, uh, which will include basically your time in Mumbai on our campus, plus the two weeks or 14 days in Milan that you will be there. Uh, so when you, you are in Milan, uh, there is a possibility that, you know, you might also go to our Rome campus for a couple of uh, uh, sessions. So, uh, you know, that being said, we are trying to have a lot of networking events back in Milan. Uh, also in Mumbai, when you are in person attending the courses in Mumbai. Uh, this is just a journey. We start in October 2023 this year and we'll end uh, in November 2024. Uh, the Milan immersion usually happens every year in May. So that's the two weeks that are uh, completely done uh, in uh, Milan, where you have probably, uh, you know, a lot of industry speakers, a lot of courses, lots of uh, site visits, uh, networking events, and, um, you know, uh, other program interactions where you probably will meet pr people from different programs and will try to, uh, you know, sort of uh, make a platform for a lot of networking sessions with them also. Uh, one of these things that I would want to, again, you know, um, uh, have uh, to be presented is the executive career curriculum. Uh, 
uh now this this executive formula is basically like uh, a like a like a full plan that we do ongoing from the beginning of the program okay uh so there are a lot of exchanges uh, that happen on campus at asia center we have copenhagen business school we have our gemba uh, program uh, you know candidates uh, which is sda bukoni school of management and rotman business school canada they are on the campus uh, once or twice a year so a lot of business schools also hold these exchange programs for a week to say 3 weeks or so on our campus and that's when we also try to inculcate or probably you know, try to put together a lot of networking uh, sessions or some common elements uh, to make sure that we are giving you that kind of uh, exposure which is probably required at a international platform like ours Uh, you get a lot of tools and resources which are available uh, with us uh, besides uh, how and what michael page does so michael page is one of the leading uh, consulting hr consulting uh, firms in the world and uh, we've been uh, working with them for past so many years and uh, uh, the idea here is that they will uh, they come each year for a, a day or two and they will assess your profiles they will help you write your cvs and if you are open and if you would want to you know uh, open up on some career opportunities we'll float or we'll connect you with michael page and then you can be in touch with them and uh, you know they can assess back your profiles and they'll suggest you to probably tweak a few things and add a few things and you know um then uh, they will take care of you at least to a point that they will push you for a interaction with the future recruiter now this doesn't guarantee that of course there will be a placement uh, but definitely adds up a lot of value for lateral um, you know conversations with companies with roles and that happens over the 15 months uh, so that's the kind of validity that can you know push around and after graduation about 2 to 3 months also so you are in the list of people who they will help on prior on priority because we have a standing relationship with michael page uh then there is a lot of uh, mentoring and coaching which happens uh, in house there are coaches there are one to one coaching sessions there are a, a few hours which are dedicated for each candidate that take that takes place during uh, you know your second year onwards people can of course book also uh, some hours before and uh, they can then assess and you know uh, put up their uh, goals and paths with their mentors uh, and that happens on uh, campus when you are you know uh, with the uh, sessions where it's not just academic but a lot of other things that are you know that we are trying to cover parallelly uh yeah i think pretty much that i think uh, shruti you can probably you know start your conversation and then you know we can pick up a little bit from my presentation as well yes so let's do that and uh, alessandro my you know the question that uh, comes across when we start looking for a program is that when you are considering further education in business what actually are the factors that individuals should look into when they are evaluating programs so ch choices between pursuing an mba or an executive masters what exactly should be you know the way that we should look into it uh, well when we talk about mba executive master uh, sen uh, absolutely the seniority uh, the work experience because uh, uh, it's uh, it's a very different uh, normally an mba Uh, While well, in India is mostly for freshers uh, or two years work experience, but even abroad, it's uh, about uh, normally around five years, five to eight years of work experience. Uh, while uh, the executive uh, MBA, uh, it's more experience, it's more interactive uh, as a program uh, because people are more senior, so there is some work to do at home of readings uh, and. cases uh, to to get prepared and then the class is really an exchange of experiences uh, and ideas and perspective with the faculty so it's a uh, uh, definitely a, a more senior program uh, uh, not only in seniority but also in the approach uh, for the diverse experiences and for the seniority of the people uh, 
Then, uh, what you should look at for sure is the faculty. For us, it's uh, I think uh, that's the most important thing. We talk, we have talked about uh, the seniority of the batch, which is your peers, uh, the diversity, and uh, the other side uh, is the faculty. Uh, if you go and see the pro the curricula of the faculty, uh, that's normally what you should really look into a program like this. And uh, in our case, uh, you can find uh, everything. Um, on the website, you will see they're all, uh, uh, first of all, they're all PhDs. Then they're all faculty that uh, have, uh, are quite senior as faculty. And also they are, which is a bit the characteristic of, of uh, Zia Bocconi, uh, it's a crossroads of several things. One faculty, uh, extremely well trained, and that's why we are at the top of the world, even with our PhD, because the training, uh, that is given with an approach that is a sort of bridge between the American case-based approach and the more theoretical approach of, uh, of Europe. We're a little bit uh, in between. Uh, so it's also faculty, uh, so I would say in training, it's faculty, they are all obliged to do research of very high quality, published in A plus uh, journals. Uh, for that, uh, as the Bocconi, is number one in Europe for research. So cutting edge research-based uh, teaching, but incredibly, at the same time, they're also all working faculties. They're all uh, top executives, entrepreneur, consultants, so very hands-on. Uh, that's why it's so uh, important to look into who is the faculty. In our case, please look at the faculty, look at their CV, because it really makes a, different, a difference. Then also the way they teach, that, that is difficult to, to see on, uh, on paper or on a website. But uh, there are some classes, I think, online, uh, re recorded, which is something like that. The, the way they teach is really different also. Yes. And uh, what about career goals? Yes, please. No, sorry, I was asking Ruchi, am I wrong? Do we have some uh, recorded class online or something like that that they can look into? We have some master classes which can be master class. Perfect. Master classes are good enough to see how they teach. Um, sorry, Shruti, you were saying? Yes. So I was coming to the uh, you know the next part of the question. So you know as uh, we are uh, when we check out the programs and we look at the faculty. Again, another underlying question or uh, that remains is the career goals. So what exactly are the career goals that an executive master's program can help you fulfill? While uh, what would be the career goals that can be achieved through an MBA? So how are these different? Yes, it's, uh, career goals are, are very diverse uh, and very personal. We see that, uh, I would say there are uh, uh, three main career goals. Uh, one is having an executive MBA from a top school. That is always a, a, a very good self-reward uh, uh, when you are uh, at a certain stage of your career. Having that piece of paper from one of the top 10 schools in the world is good to have it. Number two, there are people that uh, want to shift sector. And for sure, a program like this give you, gives you an in-depth uh, um, touch of multiple functions and multiple sectors. Uh, with interactions with people from multiple fun functions and sectors. So it's the best way to really understand if, uh, if uh, you really want uh, to shift and what to expect uh, with perspective from people from, from that sector, that function. Uh, the third approach normally is people that want to step up their, their career. Okay, so you want to get uh, stronger into the fundamentals, uh, create a, net a, a network of a high level like the one of our master, uh, and uh, uh, start uh, discussing and putting yourself in uh, a level with uh, people uh, that are very senior uh, from different uh, sectors uh, that will uh, definitely help you and uh, for sure then the, the piece of paper, let's call it like this, which is a master from Europe, uh, it's, it's a very heavy piece of paper, okay, for any kind of corporate in India. At the corporate level, everybody knows what it means to have 
uh, a master uh, an MBA from Bocconi. Uh, at global level, absolutely everybody also knows. And bringing that to the table uh, is uh, it's something that makes the difference. Yes. And irrespective of the program, whether it is an executive master's or an executive MBA, and what are the ex uh, so professionals with work experience, with a reasonable work experience, they when they are uh, transitioning their career paths, what are the things that they should consider and focus on when they are planning their transition to a new career path? Well, uh, keeping in mind, especially these kind of professionals, uh, you will see that uh, year on year we have been adding uh, the coaching and mentoring uh, because that is something that is extremely useful. Uh, coaching and mentoring by people that are professional in doing that and that are out of your uh, own, uh, own environment and with a lot of experience uh, really gives you a support in uh, not telling you what to do, but gives you a support for you to understand what you want to do exactly and how to do that then once you have decided what you want to do. Right. And what about, uh, you know, the executive master's program at uh, ASDA Bocconi? So how does that prepare students for the career transitions? You've already shared some details about in the, um, uh, the Michael Page Association and the mentoring program that goes on. So how is it that one should plan their career when they are getting into the program and what expectations can they have? Yeah, on top of, as you were rightly mentioning, uh, coaching uh, mentoring, uh, support from external uh, professionals. Uh, I would say the program itself is a big support because uh, it has been studied for people with a certain seniority. So each subject, uh, while it goes down to the fundamentals also, because we do understand that there are people coming from the most diverse uh, functions, uh, it is also extremely cutting edge for what I was telling you before, uh, heavily based in research and uh, uh, heavily based in people uh, in faculty hands-on. So the, the approach itself of the program really puts you at the forefront of uh, each single subject uh, with a good understanding also of uh, uh, the, the, the latest, uh, uh, I wouldn't call it trends, but uh, um, where the market is going whether it is generative AI or things like this, because Bocconi being at the forefront of, uh, um, of uh, research uh, in that area, in those areas, we are always the first one to dive. Uh, for example, in innovation, we have the Divo Lab that uh, uh, we have also brought in India and we are developing this, uh, this, uh, this year even more. Divo Lab has become the, 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 the benchmark in Italy and in Europe for innovation. So we have all the top 30 um, company, tech company, MNCs, Italian companies, European companies, founding member of the lab. And every quarter there is a, 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 a report coming out, um, uh, directed and discussed with all the top 30 uh, tech companies. So always at the forefront, we were in fact sponsoring also when some uh, 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 came from uh, OpenAI uh, in Delhi with uh, ET, uh, and we will be working, we are working, we'll be doing a lot of uh, uh, events at the school on generative AI because uh, for sure it's something that is disrupting the market and we want uh, our students uh, to, to be equipped with uh, the latest uh, uh, tools in everything. So that's what brings you a program like this that is extremely updated. Uh, every every year we update the, the curriculum, uh, we upgrade the, uh, the C level uh, and everything. So you get really the latest uh, and you get out uh, equipped with the best that you can to transition or sc uh, scale up or just uh, continue with your career. Yes. And uh, we do understand that, you know, the program selection is very, uh, so it is a very selective intake, uh, 28, 30 people, that becomes a very limited number of people. So can you share some success stories 
or examples of the um, you know the uh, IEMB graduates who have uh, navigated career transitions and achieved their career goals. Uh, okay, here you have a, a chart of uh, a few uh, career uh, paths that have been there. I mentioned before the uh, the CEO of uh, Paytm Money is uh, one uh, is an alumnus, uh, and uh, so uh, I don't know, Ruchi, if you want to help me because in specifics uh, I just know a few of them because we keep on interacting, but. Uh, Maybe Ruchi is better than me in giving you some specific example. Sure. So uh, uh, definitely, I mean, we've had a lot of career transitions. And I think uh, when they start with their program, uh, even then after, say, post starting three months of the program, there are lots of, uh, uh, you know, vertical movements. Uh, there are lots of horizontal moments in the in terms of they would widen uh, their portfolio of work, etc., so that they could transition to the next move. Uh, one of the things I would want to you know uh, add here to the conversation is that uh, sorry is uh, a lot of uh, people who come uh, say from nine years to fifteen years of work experience, they're already at a stage where they are functional experts. Uh, so usually the agenda is that now I am a fu functional expert. I would w rather want to move to a managerial level where I would probably look at a business uh, role or a strategy role or probably a leadership role. Uh, so a lot of the program is also focused on that path. Uh, once you have your coach in uh, the school, when you start with the program, uh, you can actually do that mapping as well, which means that it's not only the personal assessment that happens, but also it helps you uh, gain an insight of how to approach your company. Okay, uh, because you're already working in a setup and there could be a lot of opportunities right there. Uh, one is one way is to look at that. And the second way is, of course, that we are facilitating a lot of other options with a lot of other consulting firms and the school's repository of a lot of recruiters who come for full time programs uh, and so and so forth. Uh, but with respect to uh, say, you know, don't pick on, you know, specific uh, people, uh, but there has been uh, good transitions, uh, not uh, a huge uh, transition from sector to sector, uh, but definitely uh, vertically or probably, you know, company wise, designation wise, all of that has happened a lot. Now, I see a question actually, you know, and which is why I probably connect to it that uh, I'm in marketing and I would rather want to uh, shift to investment banking. This is a big risk group for sure, right? And um, it's not impossible for sure. But but rather in that, there is a lot of assessment goes in place. There is a lot of risk that happens. There is a lot of openness that needs to be uh, there uh, in terms of your candidature. Uh, there might be uh, some pay cuts somewhere, uh, you know, um, some hierarchy that you will probably not agree to because you are at a certain level. And when you are completely shifting that, if you are open, nothing like it. Okay, the program will sort of give you a foundation to pick on that and will allow you to probably also go a little bit more concentrated on it. Okay, so it, it has happened in past also that the program is actually structured in a very general management uh, per se, right? So if you are coming from a marketing expertise and if you are looking at, say, investment banking as a whole, it's not going to be easy to crack while you are already working. So you have to put a lot of effort even be beyond the program and beyond the working that you are doing because you are actually going to be competing with people who are actually concentrated, you know, uh, with their careers for last eight to 10 years. And where will you be placed in that needs to be really picked upon. Uh, so all of these, you know, small questions uh, are really answered by the faculty, by the coaches, by the mentors. And I think, you know, they are at a better place to answer those things. Uh, but as much as I know, and I could really uh, put down that answer, um, you ha there has to be a huge openness uh, to bring that in picture, for sure. Um, career transitions, we had uh, CHROs who've changed companies, who've become, uh, you know, heads, who've become APAC leaders as well on the very senior role of it. Uh, when you look at 10 to 15 years of work experience, a lot of managers have moved to vice presidents and AVPs, etc. 
um uh, typically we had a very good range of people who had say 13 to 18 years of work experience over the past few years and that range is concentrated to move a lot more senior uh, from the others which are probably at 10 years to 12 years uh, but definitely i mean 10 years to 12 years and 13 years is more easy than the latter one which is even more tougher um, uh, but yeah people have transitioned in their organizations during the program after 3 months and after the program uh, within 3 months also we have seen a lot of shifts in terms of uh, companies per se so i'm just going to move this and you know we can you can have the uh, data set for yourself and we can put you in touch with someone who aligns with your profile so that you can understand their journey and track back as to how you would want to allow yourself to pursue this program right and we have questions about you know having 8 years of experience in infrastructure uh, sector uh, with the public sector and i think another one is uh, from satyam he says he has 8 years of experience with 2 years of cap so should he go in for the executive um, uh, regular mba or the executive masters what what is it uh, that he should consider as a again you know I, i also feel that it's very personal a motivation uh, as to why would you want to have that push a very personal objective one is that i always will probe into questioning yourself that why do you want to do it is it money is it the learning or is it the position right if you think that you can align those or give percentages to all of those you will know the answer now when you are already saying that out of eight, out of 8 years or 8 years of experience with 2 years of gap which means that uh there could be anything i mean gaps are now treated very very uh, you know nicely in the industry unlike a couple of years back but um, if you are able to really cope up and you know match up with that nothing like it i mean we have had exceptional profiles who would touch 8 years of work experience and have transitioned a lot during the program as well uh but then yeah you have to understand what profile you were at and what is your objective where, what is your goal where do you want to reach are you looking at transitioning in your own company or somewhere else are you looking at uh, you know uh, probably getting mastered at your function because 8 years is still at a nascent stage okay it's not very concentrated it's not very heavy on one function so you have options for sure uh but yeah which is why we also have a lot of profile evaluations that we do individually uh you guys can also send cvs and we'll try to uh, you know a back map it for you and you know guide you if this is the right fitment and if this is the right program or eventually that whether you should be doing the program now or maybe in in two years okay so yeah that's about it for uh, you know some of these questions i can actually take over some of the other questions also yes please go ahead so there uh, so about the interview process so what is the interview process like how is the interview conducted and uh, then again another question about what are the components which are important in the sa or the sop right uh i think with admissions I, i'm just going to uh, quickly run through because we have not uh, touched base on the uh, selection process and the admissions process um it's a selective batch uh, we've had about 30 uh, candidates in the last uh, few batches although with the new uh, access that we have created with you know just one intervention per month we've opened up uh, uh, the batch and we we are open to increase the batch size so this time it is going to be an increased batch size for sure which means that will allow a lot of people to travel uh, from places once a month and that should not be a problem and a lot of people have shown interest from you know a lot of places around uh, of course another thing is that your company your support system has to be really really very tight and very supportive if you are going ahead with something like this uh, uh, but that uh, helps us or that puts us in a place that we are going to increase our batch size uh, say uh, said that uh, one is your full application which you make on sd bukoni asia uh, sd bukoni school of management's platform okay so when we are saying that we are asia center we are just here to facilitate the program now i'm just giving you a clarity here is that a lot of people will come back that 
then is am i going to get uh, the certificate or the masters from asia center or from bukoni right the program is absolutely from bukoni the application is at sda bukoni school of management's uh, site uh the faculty curriculum design all of that is from sd bukoni school of management the asia center is here as a platform to facilitate the program partially in mumbai and partially in the main campus so when you receive your executive masters it will be from sd bukoni school of management and not the asia center uh this also puts you uh, a question here is that uh what is the validity credibility of that particular master uh, it's a master which will give you 60 credit points which is uh, under the italian so it's a legal master under the italian education laws and um, uh, there is credit system which is associated with european credit transfer system now it's a system which is globally accepted uh, so if you had to move from say in any european country to say canada or any other place around the world all these credit points or credit systems will help you uh, validate your program validate the program's rigor and uh, the stature of the program that you will that you have gone through uh, in the past there are there have been a lot of candidates who have uh, gone through the uh, gone through with pr for canada for australia etc and they have validated this program as an equivalent to an executive mba uh with a one year full uh, one and a half year uh, you know full time regor uh so there are some hours which are associated with these credit points and that's how they align how much regor is and what is the uh, level of the program this is a specialized master uh which is delivered here uh, at the asia center but it is from sd bukoni school of management so you can call it as an equivalent it's just the nomenclature i think we've had a lot of nomenclatures in india as well from pgps to embas to uh, uh, self and sep and i i mean we can go on but these are executive programs that are designed with a focus on a certain um, uh, element like experience and uh, mode etc but yes this is a legal masters that we have when we deliver at the asia center uh, quickly uh, the eligibility of course uh, a degree a bachelor's degree uh, any working professional or an entrepreneur or women who are willing to start their career after a break is what we are looking at uh, then minimum year minimum work experience of 9 years is what we are saying right uh, at a very uh, exceptional point it can be a little bit lower but then there has to be an exceptional uh, intervention here which means that you've had strong academics or you've had a strong work experience even if it is not meeting the criteria of 9 years but have seen a lot of uh, you know upward uh, movement in your career and not only professional career but what you have done otherwise is uh, you know personally at a lot of uh, stands where you know a lot of people do a lot of voluntary work etc cetera, etc cetera, and how you can showcase all of that uh, that is the part of uh, you know the minimum criteria that we have we have also an entrance exam we uh, accept gre and gmat uh, but if you do not have gre and gmat we have our internal test that is a part of the process so once you submit your application in application you also have an essay which is an equivalent to an sop uh, again you know sops are usually the reflections of what you have done and to showcase to the admissions team that you can be molded to become the next uh, bigger you so what we are looking at is a lot of scope and a lot of clarity of thought as to why you are joining a certain program and what is your thought process uh, for doing so uh, you then you know it it has to of course align with a lot of things that you have done in past um, but what you will probably also be doing ahead uh with the application system uh it's very simple just one essay and you submit your application then you go through the test that you have to take mandatory if you do not have gmat or gre uh then once you clear that there is a letter of recommendation which is supposed to be processed there is only one letter of recommendation that happens in the process uh that has to be submitted before the interview 
if your application and all of or if your test scores are eligible enough you move to the next round and the last round which is the personal interview round the personal interview round uh, is happening online and offline both we uh, push people to probably come offline see the campus and meet us and uh, give their uh, you know interviews but nonetheless uh, you know we are also open to have uh, online um, interviews if you are not located from or around mumbai um, then we have uh, is that a period where you get your offer letter okay uh, when you get your offer letter that offer letter will assess your tuition waiver your scholarship amount and um, your installment dates so we do not ask for the fees up front whole uh, but there are installments over the next uh, one year um we have loan partners we have uh, we have some rates which are already been decided etc so all of that aid is available uh, going back one step scholarships and tuition waivers that we have uh, scholarships are uh, to a certain degree and then there are tuition waivers depending on the percentages overall it can be about 3 to 3.5 lakhs in total also um, so these are two different things uh scholarships are usually very targeted at say diversity points or say women candidates and so on and so forth so uh, there is scholarship amount plus there can be an added tuition waiver depending on your professional and academic career that you had had in past and the assessment of your personal interview your lor and your essay of course um you get about 7 to 14 days to accept the offer and then another 7 to 14 days to withdraw the offer uh that's the cycle that we have um and uh, yeah the total fees for the program is 18 lakh plus gst uh the expense that could go above this would be if you are traveling uh, to mumbai if you are not from mumbai uh then some expense that can happen in milan when you are in two, when you are there for two weeks uh in milan uh we we facilitate the visas for you you are on student visa for us uh so all the process is being taken care by us uh, for that matter and you also of course have the whole cohort so accommodation all of that just happens on group basis uh so that is being taken care as well but that is an added cost which goes above that uh should do you have any questions because i actually completed the admission piece a little bit here in the flow but if there are any other admission uh i think no, there was I... work experience yes so somebody wanted to ask about the upper cap of work experience is there any upper cap of you know when you should not oh, apply or... no uh, we've had that that's the beauty i think we've had people who had about 30 35 years of work experience also and believe me i mean those classes are fantastic because you get a huge variety of thoughts in that uh, class uh, a good uh, experience that lies for our class is between say 14 years to about 21 years that's like the good chunk that lies had been there for the past few years actually uh, but yeah i mean at the lower cap we would say is that it cannot go beyond say 7 or so uh, again at 7 or 8 also you really have to uh be there to showcase what exceptional that you have and why you should be at the program like this because our average for the class work experience here is about 15.5 to 16 years so this is a little bit a senior class for sure um but we've had people who've had uh, below 10 years as well mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, yes yeah sorry there was this one question no, no, that what work experience will that be counted till the time you join the program is what mm-hmm. it will be right of course you will be so, working throughout uh, uh but we'd love to understand that if you are making your application now you should have a minimum of say 7 to 8 years uh to start of the application All right. Satyam has a follow-up question. He is asking, "Can you share the placement report in terms of salary of the last batch?" So we do not facilitate any placement reports. This is not a full-time program. One, 
uh, we have outstandingly well uh, established relationship with our hr consulting partners but that is only to the extent that we facilitate that conversation we will help you uh, put in touch with that consulting firm who will prioritize your cv who will prioritize your profile and give you opportunities in the open market um, Uh, but there is this is not a full time program this is a program for working professionals and hence there is no uh, placement per se or a placement report uh, what we can probably give you is the career progression where people have transitioned where people have shown the movement in terms of their salary changes etc and that's about it right and i have one question uh, towards the end ruchi that is about the alumni status and you know the alumni networks what is the kind of support that uh, that particular cohort gets at the end of completion of the program absolutely uh, very important right like i think we get they get a full uh, alumni status because it's the master that you are going to get Uh, so you become the part of Bukoni Alumni Association, which has about 1.3 lakh or 1.2 lakh plus alums, um, which are based not only in India but across the globe. There are chapters across the globe in Europe, US, UK, you name it, and there are chapters which are located all over the places. You get a full directory, uh, or the if you go to the Bukoni Alumni Association, it's a full fledged site and service which have which happens to be there. uh with access to who is where what profile how you can connect with them to a lot of uh, uh, you know um uh, a a uh, what do you say a job hunting uh, you know place in it a mentoring place in it a lot of other things that are there in that uh, alumni association so you you pretty much get access to that you are a full alumni uh, of bukoni it's not just a certificate program for sure it's a legal master uh, so you get a bukoni alumni id once you graduate you get access to a lot of these events which are happening across the world um you get to be part of these small groups here and there uh, where they have so when i talk about bukoni alumni they can be from university to sda bukoni school of management So SDA Bukoni School of Management focuses just on the management and executive programs, uh, where they will have about twenty to thirty thousand odd uh, alumni in that uh, you know senior uh, positions. But yeah, uh, Bukoni has been there for over a hundred years. Uh, so pretty much even from uni, you will see a lot of senior uh, folks uh, out there. Yeah, right, and. Uh... I think we've discussed pretty much all the questions that we had from the chat as well. Nothing is pending. Another uh, aspect of uh, you know the international uh, program or the international career transition that people look at once they are um, you know targeting a very niche program. In that case, how is it? How does the IIMB program help them transition or prepare themselves for such a career transition? i think that that's right bang on on the screen um uh, that's the parallel thing that we do with your academics okay uh, when you start the program this is what is happening parallelly um at all levels we we think that uh, we we should give you a lot of access which means there are lots of tools and resources which are available uh, to you which you can access and you know make yourself polished now uh, historically we have seen that people started very late once they are 6 months 7 months in the program uh you can connect back with a lot of people you can ask for mentorship you can book uh you know uh, timings for your coaching and one to one mentorship also and you can continue having that till the time you are not uh, you, you know you're not at a level where you are thinking that oh now i'm ready to really push myself out in the uh, open market um but yeah this is right there in front of you um the transition what we have seen in the past has happened usually post 3 months of joining the program and um, i think you can you can think of as many question or as many workshops as possible like a salary negotiation to self branding and to uh you know some uh personal brandings mock interviews and all of that has been taken care 
on demand of course because not all of the uh, students or candidates who enroll with us are looking for a job change for sure some of them have very very strong objective that they would want to transition from a functional leader to say a more uh, leadership role in the same organization as well there are a lot of corporate uh, uh what do you say a corporate financed uh, candidates are also involved in the program where uh, they are looking at moving to a different role uh, to probably at a pnl functional pnl role or more uh, more to say a wider uh, you know uh, market so i think with transition that you are looking at it's a parallel conversation that starts with your academics but we do not want to take a back seat on academics for sure so there are going to be a lot of exams there are going to be a lot of group presentations there is going to be a capstone project um uh, there is going to be a, a lot of rigorous things in the academic part as well um we've got people from bfsi marketing arts and so and so forth so we've had in past people uh, coming together to start their own things um and so, i mean you create that connections in that and that's what we are looking at you know why which is why we are traditionally wanting to have that 70% interaction on campus um fostering all of these things is what we are looking at uh but but yeah the executive curriculum will definitely so michael page is just one aspect of it but we also have a lot of head hunters and meetings with professionals which will also be a part of the program every now and then it might be in person it might be also online so that could also be a possibility great and uh, a special thanks to alessandro he's traveled today and he's actually very uh, you know he took out the time to join us today and uh, have a have a good night now and we'll call it a day for today ruchi thank you for sharing all the insights i think we even i did not know so much about the program that i got to know today right no problem and, thank uh, you so much thank you everyone Absolutely. for joining us yeah thank you thank you so guys please reach out for a profile evaluation you can always get in touch with the iemv team or you can also connect with us we can also connect you to ruchi and uh, you can take this conversation uh, further from there and thank you everyone and good night thank you